Okay, we need to have a conversation about puppy nipping, why it's happening and why the heck you're allowing it. But the good news is we can fix this. Actually, you can fix this. It's gonna take a lot of hard work and consistency, but we're gonna talk about how to do that right now. Are you with me? I'm Cam McCann. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. People constantly ask us how they can solve the nipping problem with their puppy. And you know, I could give you all kinds of examples on how to correct the behavior, but what people don't realize is they're actually doing things at home every single day that are promoting puppies to nip and bite. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about all of those things so you can make sure that you are not making those same mistakes. All right, we're gonna start off nice and easy. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about tone of voice. Now I am letting little Stevie be an actual nut job right now because I wanna show you that the use of our voice can actually encourage our puppies to be more wild and crazy. When we see cute puppies, it's very easy for us to say, oh, what a cute little puppy, you're so cute, oh yeah. And we have that high squeaky voice and then it just ramps the puppy up. Or we'll have other people that will say, no bite, no bite and they'll point and say no bite. Now, puppies don't come to you knowing what no bite means. So it's better if you use calm, more assertive tones. Now we don't need to yell and scream and be you know, a drill sergeant with our puppies, but we do need to speak to them in a calm tone. So I could tell her, settle. Yes, good girl, good settle, good sit. And then I'm gonna see if I can just get her to chill out for a second, settle and sit. Yes, good, settle, good, sit. So I'm still positive, but I'm not, sit, 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 good girl. She just ramps her back up again. So how you speak, okay, settle, good. How I, I speak to the dog can really help promote the calmness that my puppy has. Yes, good, and that's gonna stop her from being more prone to nipping. Yes, good. Now you might be thinking, well, that's all great, but what do I say if my puppy is nipping and biting me? Now we would actually suggest that you stay away from the word no. It's such a common word that we use every day with one another, your um, two-legged family members in the household. Instead, we would have you choose a word that's going to be more specific for the puppy when they make a mistake. It could be a low sort of growl ah, ah, sound with your voice. It could be um, a phrase like knock it off or cut it out. Cut it out. Or that's enough. Something that you don't normally use in everyday life with your kids or your husband or your wife um, that's going to be specific to the puppy and then that's going to be followed by the appropriate discipline. Now there's something that I've been doing during this last segment that you might not have noticed and that brings us to our next point. Handling is probably one of the most important things that we need to focus on with puppies. And unfortunately, it's one of the things that a lot of pet owners make a lot of mistakes with. Now, when it comes to handling, there's a couple things to think about. Most people, when they think about it, think about, you know, when we want to touch our puppy's paws or look in our, our puppy's mouth. And there's certainly a way to go about doing that. If I'm doing a lot of putting my hands on her head like this or just grabbing her paw, you can see I'm already starting to get the nipping right away. But I could go about this a lot dip more differently to teach her to actually behave herself when I'm doing these things. And I might start off by having a bit of food on her nose. And while she's nick licking and nibbling at the treat, I could hold her paw in my hand. Good girl, yes. I could teach her from the start that when I need to hold your paws or when I need to hold your ears or do anything like that, you just need to be calm. Just a bit of treat association. And obviously as she gets more comfortable, I can reduce the use of the food and I can actually go forth. But what I don't wanna do is just get right in there and be handling her in a way that's gonna uh, provoke the biting. Now that's another thing. A lot of people get a puppy and the first thing they wanna do is get down on the floor, which immediately makes me be a little bit more like a litter mate. And they love to be really handsy and play with the puppy. They like to get down and wrestle. And yeah, this is lots of fun. But if I'm having puppy nipping problems, all I'm doing is basically treating her like her brother's her sisters would and look at all the nipping and biting I can have. Now when she gets a bit older and she learns bite inhibition, she learns about you know what she's allowed to use her teeth on and what she isn't, I absolutely could roughhouse and have lots of fun with her because she would actually be able to learn to do that without putting her teeth on me. But right now as a baby puppy, I'm giving her mixed messages. I'm one sense I'm saying don't bite me and I'm, I'm getting upset with her about that and then two seconds later I'm down on the floor and I'm encouraging her to nip and bite and that is not fair. So we need to be very careful 
that we're not putting our puppy in a situation where they're going to nip and bite. Now, something you might not know about puppies is there are certain situations that are more common for them to nip and bite. So if I have a puppy who's nipping and biting, I'm not gonna take a nippy, a bitey puppy and hold them up near my face. Lots of people like to hold puppies like this. Now, this is a great way for me to lose the tip of my nose. And again, this puppy does not have any malice whatsoever. She is a wild and crazy young puppy who doesn't really have a lot of discipline and leadership quite yet. It's coming though, my friend. Um, but having her up near my face like this is not a good idea. Now, can you see what I'm doing here? <laughs> Because I don't want to get nipped in the face as I'm talking to you guys, I actually have my hand slipped in her collar, and this is a control technique. I'm holding her in a way that she can't actually turn and bite my face. What I don't want to do is open myself up to get, you know, nipped in the face or have my ponytail be grabbed. That's happened many times before with young puppies, but I'm holding her in a way that's a bit more controlled. I have her snuggled into my side. I have my hand in her collar for a little bit more control, and you see how much more calm she is in my hands because she feels uh, uh, secure. And I'm going to add one more thing to the mix, and that is couches, beds, and things that are elevated. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Settle. Settle. There we go. There it goes back to that voice thing I talked about. Good girl. If I have my puppy up on the couch or up in the bed, that's another good girl. That's another easy, thank you, baby. That's another easy place for the puppy to be up near my face and, and be a little bit too elevated. So if you're having a lot of nipping and biting problems, I would discourage for the time being to not have them up near your face, up on the couch, up on the bed. There is going to become, settle, a time for all of those things. I'm not saying that it's forever, but for now, try not to put your puppy in a situation where it's really easy easy for them to make mistakes. Next, I want to talk to you about rules and rules that come from family members in the household. So you've probably heard this before, but dogs and puppies crave consistency. And one thing that can be really challenging is when we have some people in the household that are trying to reinforce rules that are trying to be consistent and following through. And then there's other family members that aren't doing the same. I just talked about being down on the floor and roughhousing with the dog. You know, if you're someone in the household that's really trying to get the puppy to listen, and then your husband or your kids or whoever comes home and they get down and start wrestling with the puppy, it can be really hard for your puppy to understand what's okay and what's not. So right now, because they're young, this is really the most impressionable time. It is important that everybody is on board with the rules and consistency of the puppy. That's going to make this whole process go a lot faster. Puppies love when things are black and white. They don't like gray areas. They don't like the sometimes rules or the maybe rules. They want to know what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. So it's really important that as a family, you guys sit down, talk about what your expectations are going to be of the puppy and work together to make sure everybody is following through. Your training session is only as good as your training tool. So today I'm going to pick up a few items that are going to make my life a little easier. The first is this house line so I have good control in the house while I'm doing my training session. The second thing I'm going to grab is a treat pouch. This is going to make sure that I can get my treats out quickly and efficiently and also keep all those slimy treats out of my pocket. So I, well, no one likes that. And then the last thing is going to be a tug toy. Um, we're going to be talking about nipping and biting today, and I'm going to be teaching you how something like this can help your nipping and biting. Now, you can grab any of these items on our online uh, store or come and check us out in person. Come right inside, take a tour of the facility, and look at all the great stuff that we have. In my 20 plus years of training dogs, I have really learned over the years that there are two camps in terms of playing with toys and how that relates to puppy nipping. So there's the first camp that say, when puppies are nipping, give them a toy. Let them get that release out on a toy rather than it being your skin. And the issue that I have with that is that a lot of puppies find tugging on toys rewarding. So if she's biting on my arm and just after that I end up giving her a toy, she goes, oh, that works well. I gnaw on mom's arm or I grab a pant leg and immediately toys come to me and I get to have fun. So there's a certain timing that needs to happen if we are going to be using toys um, in that process and I can expand on that. The second camp is that people think that if they play with toys and get the dog tugging and being crazy on the toys that it actually is going to cause them to be crazier and nip and bite a little bit more. But what if I was to tell you that you can actually use the game of tug to establish leadership in to teach your dog actually how to use their mouth in a really polite way. 
So if I want to play with her with the tug, I can actually start by getting a bit of control. So I'm just going to wait till she relaxes a little bit there. Okay, get it. Good girl. So it starts with a bit more of a, a control start. I tell her when it's okay to jump and bite at it. Now, the other thing is that see how close my hand is to her mouth? I want her to understand that if my hand's there, look, my hands are on either side of where she's tugging. She needs to stay latched to the toy and never move to my hand. Now, if for some reason she was being careless and she moved to my hand and, um, bit me, even if it was accidental, I would just take her collar and I would stop the game immediately and not allow her to have the toy. So I would take her collar, I'd take the toy away. I would just stop her for a second. Good try. Biting skin means play stops. Okay, let's try again. And then I can offer the toy and then play once again. Now, the other thing that I like to do is teach a little bit of leadership by teaching her to give things up to me when I want as well. With young puppies, I love to teach it by way of trade. So I have a couple treats in my pocket here. While she's tugging away, I'm gonna offer her a trade. I'm gonna tell her out or drop it or whatever word you wanna use. And I'm gonna trade her for a couple treats. So I just put the treats right on her nose there. Once she sort of caught a whiff of them, she released the toy and I can teach her that when I ask her to give things up, she needs to do so. Oops, I don't want her to grab it without me saying anything. There, okay, get it, good. So again, I'm establishing some leadership which leads to then teaching her not to nip and bite, but I can do it while I'm playing with the tug toy so that she's having a, just a grand old time here, but at the same time, she's learning about how to use her mouth appropriately. Stevie's actually about to start our life skills program, which is the class that's happening behind me here. Now, we have a local facility in Flamborough, Ontario. We're actually Canadian. Um, so if you're nearby us, come and check out the facility and see what classes would be good for you and your puppy. If you're not local to us, we actually offer this exact same program online. It's also called life skills. Now, life skills offer awesome support from our instructors. It also gives you access to a community of people who have dogs that are dealing with the exact same problems that you are. So if you wanna learn about our programs, make sure you check out the link in the description below. If you have a puppy that jumps up at you a lot, if you have a puppy that, you know, grabs your slippers or your house coat as you're walking down, you know, the hallway and you need to turn and get a hold of them, or maybe they're, you know, underneath the couch trying to grab something, or they're chewing on a shoe and then you go to grab it and they run away. You know, so many people say, this is all fine, but how do I even get a hold of my puppy to stop them from nipping and biting? Now, you may have realized the moment I brought Stevie out of her crate, I put this little house line on. Now, this is a little bit different than a leash because it's very lightweight. It doesn't have a handle on the end and this is specifically designed to put on our puppies when they are in the house hence house line. And what's beautiful about this is that this can help me stop my puppy from nipping and biting because it's much easier for me to get control of a line than it is to actually get my hands on a nipping and biting and crazy jumping puppy. So if she decides to, you know, grab my house coat as we're walking down the hallway, I can just, you know, put my foot on the house line and stop her from doing so. And then I can address her. If I'm trying, if she grabs a, a, a sock or if she grabs, you know, your remote control and they're taking off. I don't have to chase the puppy around the house and, you know, lower my leadership and control status. I can stop on the line and then I can go and grab it from there. So this is going to be able to stop so many problems before they fester into a big, huge thing. Um, I'm able to get my hand and slide my hand uh, down the line to her collar to work on that control hold to get her to stop and settle from there. But nipping and biting is very, very hard to stop if you do not have control of your puppy. Um, um, and this is going to be a way that's going to allow you to eliminate a lot of the situations where the puppies amp up to a, a higher state of mind and it's really hard to get control. After watching today's video, you may have recognized some of the common mistakes that you're making that's actually causing your puppy to nip and bite more. Now, to make sure that you're not making the biggest mistake that new puppy owners make, make sure you watch that video right here. On that note, I'm Kale. This is Stevie. Happy training.